morning, everyone. Uh, as Kayla just said, my name is Kevin Rosenquist with PDA Investigations, but I think most of you know that. We are a uh, background check company. We specialize in employment screening and tenant screening. Uh, the last time I did my presentation, I did it on uh, like an FAQs, so I thought I might do a common concerns because there are quite a bit of concerns in my industry when people who don't know anything about it start thinking about it. Um, it's kind of scary to some people. and. Uh, um, you know, if you don't know what you're doing and you can't navigate the waters, you need someone on your side, and it can be this guy. So let me uh, let me dive right in here, and I'll, I'll give you a little intro. All right, data security. It's obviously a big topic these days. Um, you know, with talks of Target, Home Depot, Yahoo, the Russian hacking thing that we won't talk too much about. But um, you know, it's a big uh, it's a big talking point, and uh, one of the things one of the things is data storage. So we have a secure platform. Um, oh, wrong slide. We have a secure platform where we have all of our data stored. Um, you don't have to worry about uh, security with us. We take it very, very seriously. Uh, we always get the highest marks on our security audits. Um, where we, we probably overboard, but you know we'd rather be overboard than than uh, not be not be good enough. Our uh, we have a, 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 a platform that we use too, and they have a a security packet that's like this thick and dense and not exactly light reading, but you know it's important and they take it seriously and we take it seriously. Uh, also, um, how long is data stored? So the Fair Credit Reporting Act allows for data to be stored for seven years. So that's what we do. And another nice thing, thanks Mike, another nice thing is that um, we, we keep everything stored uh, remotely. So you can access it at any time, that way you don't have to you don't technically really have to download it or print it and keep, you know, have the risk of it getting into the wrong hands. Um, you can always just get it from our, from our server, so uh, it you know, helps, helps something uh, from, from, from getting out there that you don't want out there. A good background check doesn't always equal a good employee. You're correct. It does not. <laughs> but if you knew the stuff that I've seen, my goodness. This is my brother. He owns a company called Real Rock and Roll Movers in Los Angeles. He looks a lot tougher there than he really is. Yeah. But, but he, uh, he hires drivers and he hires movers. And um, he's a, obviously a client of ours. So he had a guy come in, um, you know, gave him a copy of his driver's license, gave him a, uh, uh, you know, good, everything was good, didn't reveal anything that was wrong. And then we got his MVR back, his motor vehicle report. And as you can see, his license is currently suspended. He did not mention that. So that uh, he almost went behind the wheel of one of my brother's moving trucks uh, with a suspended license. Then we kept going, and we found out he had a, a misdemeanor for vandalism, not that big of a deal, but more importantly, there was currently a warrant issued for his arrest. That's not good either. You don't want to hire someone to arrest that. So my brother let him go, and uh, when he told him why, he was, the guy was like, oh, I don't, know, I don't know anything about that. It's like, okay, yeah. sure you don't. Yeah, yeah that makes sense, right? <laughs> and you don't know that there's a warrant out for your arrest. I have no idea. Maybe Allison can, can uh, clue us in on that. <laughs> um, another one that we had, this was for a um, uh, convenience store. Well, we have a client in Illinois who has just a bunch of convenience stores. And this guy has uh, felony, burglary, first offense, guilty, 2014. He had six years in jail. Obviously, he got out early probably went straight or, or escaped, either way, it's not good. Um, and then uh, there's more, he also had assault in the second degree as part of that as well. Obviously, you don't really want someone that's burglary and assault in a convenience store where they're going to be around people and kids and handling cash and, and all that. So, you know, just kind of like a couple of, uh, a couple of reasons, a, a couple of things that, that you know, that you can, uh, examples that you can see of why our clients would be, uh, it's beneficial for them. Uh, and as I always say, applicants aren't going to hand you their red flags, and that's where uh, that's where we can help. And that's why the background checks are so important. I don't understand what action I'm allowed to take after receiving an adverse background report. What these dispositions mean on these criminal reports. How to handle the adverse action process. How the Chicago Bears committed $18 million in guaranteed money to a backup quarterback with limited success in five years. I'm with you. I don't understand it. I showed this to you last time. I have a, I have a uh, uh, certificate that says that I have advanced certification in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. All of, everybody who works for us has this, and uh, so we can help. We, uh, we can help you answer these questions. Like, what action am I allowed to take after receiving an adverse background report? You can do pretty much, you know, you can do what you want to do as long as you have policy in place. I mean, 
If you have adverse uh, information, like the examples I gave earlier, you can take action against that. It's okay. We always tell people to have a policy in a handbook, something like that, where you know, if you if you have a zero tolerance drug policy, you're allowed to have that. You can do that, but have it documented because you got to be you got to make sure you maintain consistency and you got to make sure that everybody knows what your policies are. So you can't like have one person that you get rid of for having marijuana and another person you don't. You got to be consistent. You got to have a policy in place. What these dispositions mean? I always tell people first. I'm not a lawyer. I don't give legal advice, but I can help kind of decipher some of these things and decode them. It's very hard sometimes. You know, it's not as simple as guilty and not guilty. Sometimes there's deferred adjudication and there's uh, conditional discharge. And there's all these various things that, that you, would, you wouldn't know what they are unless you're in this industry or a lawyer or somebody like that. I can help you kind of decipher that. And uh, uh, again, I'm not a lawyer. I don't make your hiring decisions for you. However, I can at least help kind of guide you in the right direction. How to handle the adverse action process. So the adverse action process is you have a background check that comes back bad and you want to you either not hire the person or terminate the person. What do you have to do? The process is that you have to send them what's called a pre-adverse letter saying, hey, we found something on your background check that may negatively affect your employment here. And you give them five days to dispute it. If they don't dispute it, you send them what's called a post-adverse action letter that says you're not allowed to, or you're not going to be working here, and that's it. That's done. If they do dispute it, we handle that. You don't have to worry about that. That's something that we handle with the court or the researchers that we deal with. So that's not something that you have to worry about. As far as bears are concerned, the quarterback market is really, really tough right now. There's not a lot of good quarterbacks out there. There's not very many elite quarterbacks, and teams tend to overpay for quarterbacks. So we'll see how this works out, but got to maintain you know, some sort of positive outlook, right? <laughs> <laughs> bears fit? No? <laughs> Background checks are too expensive. Well, that's true, but how else am I going to uh, keep up my lab lifestyle? <laughs> that's a lot more booby on a big screen. <laughs> wow, all right. Uh, hiring is actually far more expensive um, when you, than, than background checks. Society for Human Resource Management estimates the average cost for hire for companies is $4,129, and that it takes about 42 days to fill an open position. Now, obviously, there's different levels to this, to this, the size of this all. If Steve's hiring somebody new, probably not going to take 42 days and four grand. But you know, for you know, medium-sized businesses, it does, and it's a, it's a, it's a real, you know, it's a real, uh, it's a real problem. We do a customized approach. Uh, all of our client, all of our packages are are designed specifically for our clients' needs. We don't have predefined screening packages, and that helps people save money. We don't want people to pay for things that they don't want or need and that aren't going to benefit them. So instead of saying, okay, here's our standard package and our executive package and blah, 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 we do everything as customized to everybody's specific needs. And that helps to save money. Uh, we can also create multiple screening packages. So in my brother's case, you know, he has two screening packages in our system. He has a driver package and a uh, mover one. Um, if the guy's not going to be driving, he doesn't need to spend money on a motor vehicle report for that person. So we can create multiple packages to help kind of keep the cost down. Uh, more cost effective, I already got that, and it helps maintain consistency, which is really important in what we do because uh, consistency is key uh, within positions. So if you're hiring for a driver or something like that, you want to make sure you're checking for the same things no matter what, uh, no matter who's coming in and applying for the position, no matter their gender, no matter their race, no matter their sexual orientation. You don't want to do different things for a different type of person because then it can look like discrimination. So consistency is super important. Doing the multiple screening packages can help that immensely. I don't want to get sued. Neither do I. I understand, and uh, uh, maybe you just need to hire a good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Compliance is the key. Compliance is everything in, in, our, uh, in, in our industry. Uh, paperwork is really important. The FCRA has super, super strict, uh, uh, again, that's a Fair Credit Reporting Act, guidelines on paperwork. Uh, things like there's, there's a series of forms you have to give to an applicant. One's an authorization. That basically says you can do this. One's a disclosure saying, I know my rights. They have to be separate documents. There are actually been companies that have been sued because they have that as a one standalone document. Absolutely 100% has to be separate documents. And uh, that's something that we can definitely help you with and get your paperwork in order. Again, I, I preach it all the time, consistency. Just be consistent with what you do. Don't, don't you know, not hire someone for one crime and then hire somebody who has the same crime. Just keep it consistent and that will help you very much to stay out of the courtroom. And uh, best practices. You know, talk to your counsel or whoever kind of you know, your HR department or whatever, and, and come up with a good best practices procedure uh, for any situation. You know, whether you're uh, uh, a small, medium, or, or large size business, if you're doing background checks, just make sure you have like a like a system in place for every 
for, for every situation. And again, we can definitely help you come up with that kind of stuff. And uh, that's it. That's my presentation. Uh, do we have any questions? How many of us have you investigated? Did you not see my uh, my earlier slide? The dirt on the TRP memo. What was the question? Lots. I got, I got all the dirt. <laughs> so on TRP. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have you're in the top of the list. Okay. All right. Lots of that stuff. Anyway. We'll talk later. Kevin, if um, if a, a person like Kayla is working with that. Is just looking at people renting in a property or something. Mm -hmm. What would they expect to pay for that rent? Depends on how deep they want to go. Typically, what people will do is a credit report um, and uh, maybe a criminal report. And depending, sometimes they'll do a sexual a sex offender registry search um, or a landlord verification. Typically speaking, it's probably around thirty bucks. Really? Yeah, awesome. it's about thirty dollars. I mean, it's really not that expensive. People think it's a lot more expensive. And but you can go. I mean, you get drug testing involved and things like that. You can get up into the hundreds easily. And you need their name and social? Uh, yeah, and their authorization, Steve. Definitely need their authorization. You, do? Yeah. you need their permission. You can't do it. I don't want to list from you later on of people that you want me to pay. Yeah, there's paperwork involved, uh, which obviously, again, will help. We help our clients put together. Um, there's various forms. You've got to inform them of their rights. You have to get their signature on stuff. And, and just uh, uh, basically just have, let them know that you're going to be doing this and what you're going to be doing. And, and the nice thing about the paperwork too is, once they sign it, you can do it. You can keep uh, checking them later on if you want to do audits. You know, there's uh, a lot of companies that we have that have delivery drivers, and they do yearly uh, motor vehicle uh, audits to make sure that they uh, haven't gotten, you know, in some horrible, uh, you know, situation with their motor vehicle employers. Okay. Are there certain industries where you would say, eh, these people are usually pretty safe? For instance, techie. I hate to say geeks. No. Yeah, I know what you mean. Programmers and things like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, on you. <laughs> <laughs> they're hackers. Come on. I mean, it's it's yes. There's there's definitely industries that are more you you find things more often. The convenience store example I gave earlier. You know, they're probably they're paying minimum wage. It's not an exactly a desirable job. I get a lot of hits. Uh, criminal stuff with those people, and a lot of positive hits on marijuana or meth or heroin or cocaine or all that stuff. It's it's just kind of part of the thing. Yeah, if I had a, you know I have some clients that are, are you know have other types of businesses and never really get hits at all. So yes, while I agree that that there are certain industries that is probably not that necessary, it's becoming more the norm. I think just because people also like to say that they that they that they can do it. I talked to Janine about this earlier. You know, just to be able to tell people, hey, we did a background check on these on these people. We got a professional background check done. It makes people feel better. You know, if you you have someone coming into your house, like home health care or my brother's moving company. I mean, you have people going into people's houses where there's going to be possessions and kids and stuff. And it's uh, it's good to say, be able to say, hey, we background check everybody. So, anyway, see, it's not, obviously it's not 100 percent. You know, just because the background check is clean doesn't mean the person's never going to do anything bad. But chances are, it's probably a better sign at least that they're going to be a good a good person. Cool. So when you you talk about drugs, you you mean like if they have a an arrest or something? Is we do drug testing as well. You do. Yeah, oh. and um, we don't actually administer the drug test, but we have uh, a vendor who works with us and, okay. and does that. And uh, and I've, I've said this before, uh, you know, because marijuana is still federally illegal, even though we're in, federally illegal, because even though we're in Colorado, you can have a zero tolerance policy for marijuana if you want as well. There's a court case about that. And. You know, until as long as it's federally federally illegal, you are allowed to kind of decide what you want to do. But again, I always say consistency. There are some people who drug test; they don't care about marijuana. If there's marijuana, if that comes up positive, they don't really care. What they're looking for more is meth. Heroin is very very big right now, so that's the kind of stuff that more people are looking for as a danger to the workplace. When you do a heroin test, does it show up oxycontin? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, oxycontin. It's a uh, what is it? It's a uh, Opioids. Opioids. Yeah. Opioids. Yeah. So right. it shows any opioid. Yeah, it shows any opioid uh, uh, out there. Yeah. yeah. And then we do a check for uh, amphetamines, which includes methamphetamines as well. It's an oxycontin medication they give you for pain. Yep. Yeah. And what happens is if you uh, if if you test positive, it gets sent to the uh, uh, medical review officer. The medical review officer will call you and say, Hey, you got a reason that why you're testing positive for opioids? And they go, Oh yeah, well I just had my wisdom teeth done. 
As long as you can explain it and prove that you have a reason for it, they'll take it off and nobody will see it. How long does it stay in your body? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Why did we just say it? Poppy seed muffin, that could be a problem too. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's something that's small. They, 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 they haven't improved that, have they, over? I mean, because I, I know that occurs, or that, and that actually gets utilized a lot by those who are actually in that business. Yeah, they say, yeah, they say that they've been eating seed muffins. Yes. Yeah, so has like that improved? Has has, has that so has that testing yeah. improved? <laughs> um, I, have, I can tell you that in two years working here, I've never ever seen a positive test that that coffee seed muffin ended up being the reason that they uh, it's never come up. So well, and, and, I, and I also know for that reason that that a lot of testing sites have actually been shut down recently. Yeah. Is that all the labs? Labs up? Uh, so what what's an ideal? Client for you. As I'm working through my day and I run across some of my clients, <laughs> what would be the ideal? I mean, anybody who's looking to uh, add screening to their hiring practices. I mean, we work with small companies, we work with medium sized companies, we work with large companies. I mean, it really, anybody anybody who needs background checks, I'm, I'm more than willing to put something, something together for them. Do you find that medium sized and large companies already have something in place? Most people already have something in place these days, yeah. So could it be competitive? Could you go in and yeah, post and that's what a lot of my day is uh, is doing okay. is talking to people about about why we're the best, <laughs> why they should switch to us. But you know, it's hard because a lot of people really like their their, their vendors and they don't want to switch. But um, I'm always happy to talk to people. I'm not a those of you who know me. I'm not a hard sell kind of guy. I mean, I and I'm happy to talk to anybody about what they're currently doing. Maybe they're spending too much money. I mean, I had a, I met with someone uh, last week who I looked at what they were doing. and I was like, I, I can't beat that. You do. You have a great setup here. Just stick with it. And, and I don't have a problem saying that. If subcontractors, if you have, like I have employees that work for me, but I also sure. work with a lot of subcontractors, mm -hmm. can you do? You can require that, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just got to be the right, again, the right paperwork. We have a, um, a client, yeah, 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 we have a client in Illinois, um, they are a, uh, uh, the, the construction, but I can't remember specifically what they do, but they work on a lot of buildings. I think they're like electrical, they're electrical. So they work on a lot of buildings. And they're required, you know, the, the, the company that they're, um, uh, that they're going to be working for, who's building the building, require them to do background checks. So they get kind of proactive about it, and they do it through us and then show them that they're doing the background check. So the other person requires it. The other, the other company could do it, too. It'd just be a different procedure. But yeah, absolutely you can. Okay. But again, be consistent. One thing about the opioid staying in the system about seven days. Seven days. And then marijuana is 30 days, so. Marijuana depends, though. Marijuana depends on how much you're smoking. If you're a regular smoker, yeah, I think it's about 30 days. Mm -hmm. If you just have, you know, if you take a puff every now and then, I think it'll go out a lot sooner. Right. There's a lot of water. Well, it's funny. That's actually something. There's a, there's a name for it, but there's actually, they have a, new t a way of telling if you've been what they call water loading. Where you're just chugging water, because what it does is it, it you 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 lose a, a nutrient that's supposed to be in your your urine, and when they see that that's not there, they know what you've been doing, so they'll make you retake the test. I mean, it's yeah. It's, I don't think that works if you're a an everyday you know wake and bake kind of guy, but I think it would work if you're a like very occasional stoner. Yeah. Then you take acid. Then yeah, yeah. Then I, yeah, maybe then Robin and uh, and, and Johnny will help you figure out. <laughs> Is that how you tell when you're not using enough marijuana too? Yeah. yeah. If you if you test negative, up the dosage. Good. Yeah. 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 What? Oh, that's still out of it. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.